Hello guys, c 99 here, and welcome to this little bit of an ASMR video, but it's not really going to be ASMR, mostly I'm doing this because it is currently 6 in the morning, nobody's awake, but um, basically I wanted to make this video in talking about, so there was this video that was put up on Nightwater Sports from the show 100% Voddy, which was talking about the uh, the current situation in regarding with the Brisbane Broncos as, as uh, Dreadron. Dred or Deirdre, I can't remember the pronunciation of his name. The uh, the halfback for the Brisbane Broncos has signed a three year deal for the North Queensland Cowboys, which uh, the whole conversation basically drew into this discussion that Phil Gould brings up about how there is about the development of players. So I'm going to be playing like bits and pieces of clips here. I can't exactly show. The footage of it so what i've done is basically just gotten the audio from it and put a screen up a field goal there so on the points that he does bring up the way the broncos develop their talent now compared to what they did for the first 20 years 25 years of their existence is completely different mm. and getting rid of the lower grades and we all used to have all three grades back in 1997 when the competition was split with super league and arl there were 22 teams. There was 12 teams in the ARL comp and there was 10 teams in the Super League comp. And every one of those teams had three grades in their club. So that was 66 teams. Now, within eight years, we shortened that back up to 14 teams of two grades. And people wonder why the competition was levelled there for a while. It had nothing to do with the salary cap levelling the talent. It was the fact that we just got 66 teams and jammed them down into this and had a 14-team competition that was levelled for a while. Salary cap doesn't even out the talent. I've said that for two decades. It all comes around development, who's developing and, and, what, and how your club is structured and what comes through your club and how you get to know them and the relationships they have, the relationships you have with them, how long they play together, how much the club means to them and, and bringing them through a system that has them built up as Broncos and want to be Broncos and play as Broncos for the rest of their career. So I guess this sounds like, a, is this a game problem or a club problem? Is this a game problem, it's the fact both. that you don't have those, those grades well, anymore? The, the game problem is that it's disincentivised teams to do it, clubs to do it. There is no incentive to do it. There is no reward for development. There is no reward under the salary cap. There's no incentive to do it. So a lot of clubs walked away from it and simply just go and poach kids from other clubs when they, do, when they want to go and get them. Mm -hmm. And that's just how it works. So you've got a handful of clubs that are delving in and spending money on development. The game doesn't spend anything on development. All right. And that's where the players have to come from. And that's, that's not a good system for the game. The, the game has allowed the clubs to get away from development. I feel like this issue specifically is a definite one and probably like arguably a very big problem that's going to come within the next couple of years when it comes to rugby league and its players development it's just like i know like it, it's it's a bit weird how like is of the whole poaching players i mean like like for example the knights got calen ponga from the cowboys uh as one big example of a young player but um like i know some teams have got like m a bit more of an advantage when it comes to this of like just getting players from other teams and comps like i know newcastle has its own rugby league competition and uh they have used players who were successful in that to be put into the night teams musgrove is the biggest example he was a uh, winger who won the Newcastle Rugby League Grand Final with Cessnock last year, and he made his debut a couple of weeks ago with Cronulla against Cronulla. Sorry. And it's something that's like uh, like this whole perceiving thing of loyalty. Because obviously, like, one club players are, like, a really rare thing at the moment. And I feel like the only, like, r one who's, like, really big, who's, like, hitting the middle of his of his age is Adam Reynolds, is one of them, who's currently in a bit of a contract situation with South Sydney. But it's, it's just, it, there needs to be something to get players who want to stay at one club. And the fact that the, uh, the, the, uh, <laughs> the, the other comp systems, like the, uh, the under-20s and the, uh, what was the New South Wales Cup uh, is basically just no real way of trying to develop players or promoting players into the team. Like, like for the Knights example, Achille Iwate came from what was our 
I believe was our New, Car- New South Wales Cup team, and then grow- got through the ranks and became the player that he, <laughs> that he is now. It's the same with like all of the majority of the great like one team players that have come over from the last like couple of decades, and the fact that, that we do not have it anymore is just a bit ridiculous. So it just means that you just wait for a player to look like he's developing and just buy him. It's kind of a bit of a dodgy incentive, in my personal opinion. The game has allowed the state leagues, New South Wales and Queensland League, to build their own little fiefdoms. And that's never what the commission was going to be all about. Now, it's going to take someone really strong to unravel all of that. Because the New South Wales Rugby League and the Queensland Rugby League have ensconced themselves with these New South Wales Cups and Queensland Cups. And you're not going to develop NRL talent in state league systems. I've said this all along. And the NRL clubs have become lazy with it. The state comp, the, the comments about how the state comp's not produ- going to produce any NRL talent is kind of true. It's like, like an all understanding, like relatively, like, wh- like where exactly uh, are the players? It's like, it's a, you don't exactly want to be like a career, like New South Wales Cup or interest Super Cup player. It's a bit... It's just, I, it, the whole under-20s comp being removed is just, in my honest opinion, one of the dumbest, like, business decisions the NRL has ever made. Like, it's something that, like, I remember when I was younger, when I went to Knights games, when it didn't cost an arm and a leg to go to matches, where you'd show up and watch all three grades, which would have been the New South Wales Cup, the under-20s, and the main, the, the first grade match, but... But because of this, it's all gone lost. And it's a really, really stupid thing, in my personal opinion. Does that mean the game cannot sustain a 17th or 18th team? At the moment? Mm. No, it can't. But it, they, they could easily sustain... We sustained 22 teams back in 1997 of all three grades. Mm. All right? It, it can be done if everyone's investing in development and clubs are set up the right way. They're just not anymore. As soon as clubs started saying, we'll just worry about our top 25 and our top 30 and let everything else go back to state league, it was the beginning of problems. I said it would take, within five years, you'll know what damage you've done. It took three years. Mm. It took three years. And look what's happened to our clubs. Now we don't have enough team, enough players for 16 teams. I agree. I don't know how there's going to be another team coming. I really Exactly. Don't. But that shouldn't be the case. It should not be the case. I honestly think in terms of this 17th or 18th team, this expansion they're going to do, it's just stupid. Like, and they're talking about merging teams. It's like, it's just, it's one, it's not going to happen. And secondly, it shouldn't happen because each team has all been established. It's like, it's, yeah, because you're not going to get like Manly trying to move them to North Sydney and then become this North Sydney t- team because I think the Bears would, I mean, it would be a bit ironic because the Bears and Manly had to merge and Manly became the main team, so a bit of ironic karma but uh i feel like the north sydney bears would want to be to be there by themselves and it's like then you got the uh, other teams like in the new south wales in that new south wales cup system i thought like you got western suburbs uh newtown and you north sydney as well it's just you just think like why don't they just 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 bring them in it's like yeah, the, the whole de- the lack of development is like there's a reason why in other sports like in for example I don't know people don't like to bring it up about so- soccer but um they have academies that have players from they, they, that they have players from like like kids to people that break through the uh to the first gr- the first team it's a very big system over there it's, and it's not just in England it's all around the world so I think it's definitely something that the NRL definitely does need to look into and hopefully change. They haven't invested enough money in New Zealand. They haven't invested enough money in Pacific Islands. And they haven't invested enough money in development here in Australia. Instead, we've wasted our money with a grand you know, central office with heaps of wages there for people that really didn't contribute anything to the game. Nice people, they love the game and they love working for the NRL. But it's not doing anything for the benefit of the future of the game. Broadcasters pay a fortune for the game, but they also want you to make sure the game continues on to be great. It can't be if you don't have development systems. Another one here, this is the big one. The NRL not investing enough in New Zealand and the Pacific Islands. Basically, it's like... 
they because in New Zealand it's all dominated by by rugby union, but they also like like rugby league as well, and like they needed they don't need to put try to pull their finger out and basically try to incent incentivize these players from coming to play rugby league because at the moment you got Roger Tunavasa Shek who's going to leave after this season to go rugby. There's rumours of Callum Ponga going to play rugby and potentially represent the All Blacks because the All Blacks in New Zealand is the biggest thing that you can achieve as a sport, as a sportsman in, well, I mean, like the Olympics, but like in terms of like ball sports, it's the biggest achievement that you'd want. And that's something that they need to, NRL needs to kind of need to do to sway players to stay with rugby league. And the Pacific Islands, like, like Papua New Guinea is like the only country in the world where rugby league is the number one sport. It is the main sport. They'll go mental over this. And the fact there's only a few, like a relatively a few amount of players in the NRL who's from Papua New Guinea. Like I do know that they have a Queensland Cup team there. But honestly, setting up like proper like academies over in the Pacific Islands, specifically like in Fiji and New Guinea, it will try to give the presence of this being like a type of world game that they try like that this greatest game in or the greatest game of all kind of thing. When the only real countries that really play it are like Oceania and like the north of England, and that's roughly about it. So it needs something to try to push this momentum. So anyways, that is it. Uh, it's a little bit of an odd video, but I felt like it is something that does need to be talked about. What is it, your opinions in regards to this uh, this uh, this issue that surrounds the, uh, the National Rugby League? And uh, thank you for watching this video.